What if Naruto is a Tailed Beast Part 13? Let's go. Now that the Akatsuki are on the move, or rather, the leader, Naruto is preparing himself for a big battle, potentially village devastating battle. He gears up physically and prepares himself mentally. Also going to meet Samori and talking to Kurama, his true father, one last time before this battle, if anything was to happen to the Jinchuriki or even Naruto, if that ever comes to be. During this one week between the time when Naruto found out about Jiraiya's death and the time when the Akatsuki captain came, Jiraiya was not mentioned by anyone and Naruto did not talk or even see anyone. He wasn't seen in the village anywhere at any time. No one could sense him, no one could see him or heard anything of him. He was a ghost. He was gone. Until it came to the day, village defenses were on the max, everyone was on the lookout. And they had all been on high tension for the last couple of days. They knew the Akatsuki wouldn't attack right away, but they definitely expected it maximum a week of after. Right now, it's exactly seven days after the news of the toads came that Jiraiya had fallen in battle. When suddenly, an explosion is heard at the village border at one of the guard towers. On the view of some Shunin, now a ginger haired person does a summoning jutsu when instead of having an actual animal appear, five different similar looking gingers appear and they quickly spread out. One of them doing an actual summoning jutsu this time where devastating beasts come out. One three headed fox or whatever it was. It was a monster, and the other could not even be comprehended. Each one with the size of a tailed beast. Not quite, of course, but they were definitely up there. A fight broke out. As most of the village now started fighting, some Anbu took on the summonings, and Minato immediately went in for battle, though first made a strategy with his subordinate ninjas. He was going to rush out and try to take out as many of them as possible. However, he quickly noticed that 10 years, actually more than 10 years, of not war had made him kind of soft. Not soft, but he was not the same as he used to be. This time of peace, he had not trained that much, and therefore his combative abilities decreased as well as his age, and his prime was slowly fading away. He wasn't old, of course, but he wasn't in his 20s anymore, if you know what I mean. Now Minato was only fighting one of the pains, as they had called them, or rather, as Pain himself had called them. And there were multiple of them, they didn't know which one was the real one, or even if any of them were the real ones. But they all had what's known as the legendary eye of the gods, the Renegon, used by the sage of the six paths long, long ago to save the world from evil and create the ninja kind. The person Minato was fighting was tricky, as as soon as Minato teleported to fight close combat, the person pushed him away, or when Minato was trying to do something else, like power up a jutsu, the enemy pulled him closer. He seemed to control the battlefield and everyone fighting in it, until some people tried to support Minato in the fight and came along, but they got pushed away and crushed on the ground. Minato was now getting angry seeing more and more devastation throughout his village that he had been keeping safe for many many years now. Now even if Minato wasn't seeing it, the Akatsuki were actually being overwhelmed. However, this was not it. There was more than just the pains. Slowly but surely, more and more chaos came to the battlefield. First, it started raining paper, and multiple of the same person, which were paper clones, arrived on the scene, and more and more of them seemed to appear out of thin air. Then, a few different fighters appeared as well, most notably, a guy that had blue skin, and his face resembled that of a shark. This was Kisame, 
a loyal rogue shinobi. Well, loyal to whoever he trusted, if anywhere, or any time, they would be in good hands. Now the Konoha forces were slowly being pushed back, but then backup on Konoha's side arrived too. Most notably, it was part of the Uchiha clan. As for example, there was Itachi, Shisui, and Sasuke. Three extremely strong, and while still young, very experienced, powerful fighters. Sasuke along with his brother fought Kisame, as Shisui with a speed was trying to trick Konan the woman made of paper. Buildings were being destroyed left, right, and center. Trees were being shattered and thrown around. And after mere seconds, a playground, which had been not even touched, was completely destroyed. Somebody came to Minato's rescue as well. It was his own son, Mitsumori. At first, Minato told him to run away, but he wouldn't. So father and son tagged along to fight the Akatsuki leader, who had killed Mitsumori's father, Sensei, the fourth Hokage Sensei, Jiraiya the Gallant. Speaking of the devil, he was nowhere to be seen. Quite literally, nowhere. People were afraid that he had completely left the village and possibly even the land of fire. They hadn't heard anything of him for over a week now. However, then Five of the six Payne's bodies collapsed in an instant without any crucial blows from the battle. They just collapsed. Then one of them, the one fighting Minato and Mitsumori, started flying up into the air with his robe dangling in the wind of Konoha. Dear Hokage, you have lived in peace for way too long and you shall experience what war is like once again. This world shall know pain. Shinra Tensei! The same technique that had been used on Minato and Itsumori prior was now being used, but at over a hundred times the power. It was devastating, like a bomb. It couldn't be compared to a hurricane or a natural disaster of any sort. It had its own class. It was the push of the gods. A technique only used by a true monster. As it traveled, it started in basically right in the middle of Konoha and spread out further and further and further up until the very edge where buildings who were broken started cramming against the Konoha wall. However, certain parts of the village did survive, and here's why. Number one, you had the Uchiha boys, who were in fact using their Mangekyo Sharingan abilities for a Susanoo to form, which could absorb at least parts of the shockwave, and so buildings might not be completely intact, but they weren't even close to as broken and were still standing pretty well. Now yes, Shisui has a Susano in this, okay? It's canon here, it's canon here. Doesn't matter if on the original, he has a canon Susano here. Alright, he just trained. Sasuke does too, by the way. And a little bit of the shockwave, Kakashi Hatake was actually able to absorb as he used his Kamui ability from his quote-unquote borrowed Sharingan to completely annihilate the shockwave that was heading towards him. Therefore, about three buildings who were behind him survived. It wasn't much, but it was something. But since that was very exhausting for him, he couldn't do it again, at least for a few minutes. A lot of the village was destroyed. Many, many houses broken, people hurt, people injured people dead. People were stuck under rubble, trying to breathe, trying to survive, looking for help. But there were a limited amount of people who wished medical training in the hospital, which was able to survive as there were quite a few guards on it. It was one of the most important places in the entire village after all. It did survive, but it was already at max capacity. 
and even I had 20 people on top of that, they were completely understaffed for a situation like this. Sakura was currently healing someone, an injured shinobi. Hinata was staring at the dead, the injured, and the completely broken village. And Shiru, with a depressed look, was wondering where everyone was. Her family, her friends, as well as Naruto. Where had he even been for the last few days? And how is he coping? She hoped he was alright and not mixed up with any of this. Or, well, worse. But at that very moment, Naruto arrived on the battlefield with a big puff of smoke. It was Naruto, but he wasn't alone. There were nine monsters behind him, as well as a man beside him. This was none other than the Sanin, Orochimaru. For some reason, Orochimaru was standing next to him. Perhaps Naruto had been manipulated, but that wouldn't be possible. Naruto would never succumb to something like that. And finally, the smoke and dust cleared and Naruto is visible with nine and if you're counting Orochimaru, ten monsters standing near him. Naruto looked angry however and already had 12 of his tails activated and ready for a fight even already matured to a physical level which means game was on. His chakra cloak glowing bright as ever with his chakra and key filling the entire village. He spread it out, but there was just so much. It thickened the air, with some people having trouble to breathe for a few seconds, but then adjusted slowly. But Naruto was careful not to harm the citizens, as too much chakra would actually hurt them, especially the ones in the hospital who were already on the brink of death. The man who had just devastated the leaf village then came down towards Naruto, back with the six bodies. Well, five others. These were the six pagans of the Akatsuki. And a few seconds later, Kisame and Konan arrived there too. Two very powerful fighters. Along with the leader of the Akatsuki, this would not be an easy fight. Urchumaru was about to head in for battle, but Naruto stopped him. Then two of the summonings that had been summoned earlier arrived and trying to fight Naruto too, but the tailed beast went forward and the nine of them absolutely annihilated them. The first one tails being able to bury them under sand, choking them and stealing their chakra, Matatabi using flames to burn them alive, Karama with incredible chakra, who was actually able to do a few jutsu. Nothing crazy, but, you know. And of course the rest of them, who weren't to be messed with around either. I got this, Naruto said proudly to Urshimaru. Whatever you say, boy. Now go get him. Urshimaru actually stepped back as he jumped backwards about 20 meters. 60 feet, if you're American. And Naruto slowly started walking towards the Akatsuki, then started jogging. Then started running, and faster and faster and faster until he blitzed one of them. He stood right behind Kisame and decked him in the neck, pushing him into the ground, and Kisame slid with his face dragging on the floor for 10 meters. 30 feet if you're American, and Kisame would have to take a few seconds to recover. It was a surprise attack, and a strong one at that. Then Naruto went for Konan. With his pure hands, he cut through any paper that she sent at him, and even when she tried to choke him with paper, Naruto simply used his chakra and aura to push the papers away and let them fly up and into the air, making them completely disappear from sight. Then he decked Conan in the stomach, making her gasp for air, hit her on the chin, and then kicked her into the side, making her fly away too. Then Pain himself or rather, all of the pains try to get to Naruto, but with pure martial arts, Naruto was able to dodge, block, and even attack all of them at once, and completely resist the pushing and pulling by using Chakra to stay on the ground as he was with his control. And he did all of this while still fighting. Naruto 
was above the level of any Kage at this point. Above any of the Akatsuki. He was a true god of Shinobi. A Shinobi no Kami. Now Kisame recovered and started fighting Naruto too, however he took him on just as easily as Pain and Konan. And with that, Konan arrived too, and now Naruto is fighting in a 3v1. The Tailed Beasts were done fighting the two summonings, but they didn't fight with Naruto. They started watching him, similar to Orochimaru. Naruto got this, they thought. Orochimaru had an interesting yet suspicious smile. A smirk of power and gratitude at the same time. Flashback. Naruto after finding out of Jiraiya's death, actually went to Orochimaru after two days and told him as he thought that Orochimaru should know. And then also told him that the village would likely get attacked and perhaps even destroyed if they're not careful. Orochimaru appreciated what Naruto told him and offered a little bit of a quick training, mostly just for his new type of chakra that he could get, which was nature chakra. And he would get this in the form of sage energy. Naruto agreed as he'd never really used it. He only knew it from Jiraiya. But had never any reason to learn it up until now. Because now he has to actually protect something dear to him. The village and the people he loved in it. So they did a quick training. But because Naruto had basically infinite chakra to train for days on end. Naruto trained for 24 hours a day. For 3 days straight completely mastering sage energy and especially he was able to use thousands of shadow clones and tailed beast style clones which all gathered sage energy and now he activated it during battle now we're back to present naruto jumped back clenched his fists which were on either side of his hip and his eyes seemed to change they already had one slit in it but now they had two making a cross a plus shape I, as Naruto's iris turned purple. Naruto now quickly with one fast snoop took out Konan as well as Kisame, decapitating Kisame and knocking Konan out completely as she seemed like a smart person so he would have to get information out of her. Kisame however would not give any information so he just eliminated him now. Now Pain, well the Pain's was the only one to fight. Naruto rushed each one like a pinball machine, jumping from one to another, jumping through the air with his wind jump technique, as his speed was unmatched by even Shisui, and yes, Minato as well. Naruto's pure running and jumping speed was quite literally as fast as teleportation. His speed could not be compared to any shinobi, and he took out all of the pains except for the one that had created the ginormous godlike shockwave to the crew to destroy the leaf village then put his hand on the pain's chest and basically sucked out its chakra being able to search for the energy as naruto knew that there was something else somebody controlling these bodies he had sensed it during their short but intense battle so naruto now made his way over to the quote unquote real pain as he was actually a little ways away, about 2 kilometers, 1.2 miles if you're American. But Naruto appeared there in a flash, in less than 3 seconds. He was truly at godlike speeds. However, Nagato at this point was already laying on the ground, looking up at the sky. The paper tree is gone as Conan had no power over it when she was unconscious. All of the pains were easily annihilated, and now Nagato is likely to be killed. Naruto would not simply kill him, as having heard of some of the abilities of the Renegon from Orochimaru himself, he asked for one final wish before Nagato's death. He would make it peaceful and fast if he did comply. Nagato asked what this would be, but kind of figured on his own. He was to revive everyone that has died in the battle between the Akatsuki and the Konoha Leaf Village, which only lasted less than 30 minutes. Really, it only lasted like 10 minutes, but it felt like a lifetime for 
some of the shinobi in it, as well as some of the citizens. So everybody who died would come back to life, and the ones injured were healed beyond any medical possibility. They are back to perfect health, some even better than they were before, but with that, Nagato passed out from chakra strain. However, he asked one more thing, and that was for Naruto to take his eyes. Naruto agreed, as he knew he would be able to use them because he had Samotsutsuki's chakra, being the combined son of all the tailed beasts, therefore kind of the grandson of Hagoromo, so he had better control of it than any normal human could, so he would be able to use it better and more efficiently than Nagato ever could. And of course, Naruto has a crazy amount of chakra, so even if he couldn't use it more efficiently, he won't die if he uses a certain jutsu. Anyways, now Naruto went back to the leaf village that was still destroyed, though the people were in it were fine. As Naruto was caught red-handed by about 20 shinobi, 10 Anbu, as well as Itachi, Sasuke, Shiru, Shisui, Mitsumori, Sasuke, Kakashi, Asma, Kurunai, Minato, and a few others, who were now all staring at the godlike being standing in front of them. Naruto, who had they had known since he was less than five years old, was now a true god of shinobi, a shinobi no kami, stronger than any Hokage had ever been, as the Anbus bowed down to Naruto getting on their knees. He was a legendary Anbu after all, and Minato did actually spell the tea and tell all the Anbu that Naruto was their true leader, basically. He led the Anbu to a pretty big extent, so yeah. So now they all knew and praised Naruto, and all the Jonin did too, as they lowered their heads, and even Minato showed right sign of respect. Then Minato asked if Naruto needed any help, and Naruto was actually slowly getting sleepy due to the chakra strain it had put on his body and brain and mind of taking new eyes, especially the Renegon, and his body would have to basically absorb him for now, so he was getting very very tired very quick, but Minato was able to catch him quick enough as he is the yellow flash of the leaf anyways, and then carried him on his back along with the rest of the shinobi basically protecting Naruto at this point. They got back to the village, getting to it as the wall that had been separating the forest and leaf village was gone, but what they saw was not unhappy people. They saw people with hope, cheering on Naruto as they would heard of his endeavors that saved the village, that saved everyone. Naruto was celebrated throughout the village, but and yet, he had a feeling that he wasn't quite done. He followed his instincts to the Akatsuki hideout, which he had, of course, located in his past two years. He had located all of the Akatsuki's hideouts, and then went there. There, he saw Obito and Black Setsu. By the way, this was still the same evening that he defeated Pain. He kind of sneaked away before a big party ceremony was going to honor Naruto's victory which would also give him a medal from the Hokage personally. But as said, Naruto slipped away as he fought the rest of the Akatsuki. First it was Obito along with Black Zetsu, but he wasn't much of a fighter, and a few others, but they weren't crazy strong. Of course, Obito activated his Mangekyou Sharingan, which could be a challenge, but Naruto activated his Renegon and used one pull to actually pull Na uh, Obito to Naruto and then he could punch him which completely broke his ribcage which, which would later on kill him. It was very hard even to use that one technique of the Renegon but it was pretty cool. Black Zetsu was not a challenge as he wasn't a fighter and Naruto made sure to delete his entire presence as he had heard from the Tailed Beast that Black Zetsu was the only reason that the Tailed Beast had been hated for this long and that Hagoromo was basically betrayed by his sons and Indra had been corrupted in the first place. Black Zetsu was the reason for all of this, so now he was finally gone and the world could rest in peace. The Akatsuki had been defeated by one single man, one shinobi, 
a legend, a god, a god of shinobi, Naruto of the Tailed Beast, a form of descendant of the Osutsuki, and savior of not just the Hidden Leaf Village, but savior of the world. And that was the legend of Naruto, the Gallant. He later married Shiru. Of course, first he had to get back to the ceremony that he almost completely missed, but he ended up just being thrown as late and had to explain everything. After that, after only two years, Naruto did not just become close, well, in a relationship with Shiro, they were already married, and after that, it would still be some time, but after that, they would actually have two children. Mitsumori became the fifth Hokage at the age of only 25 years old. However, Naruto was never disrespected and never looked down upon for anything he did. He was a true legend, a savior of the world, and a friend of anyone. Anyone who even had the opportunity would help him out in any way possible, and his wedding was celebrated throughout the whole world. And that was the story of what if Naruto was a tailed beast. I hope you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. The series was fun, I truly hope you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.